Welcome back. I'm now joined by Luis Ed Vargas. That was a fun match. What was it? Yeah, that what was, was going on from your side? Uh, game one was well. Game one and two were actually both kind of lopsided because uh, <laughs> game one I was able to just resolve a pyromancer and I had counter magic in my hand the whole time. Yeah, fair. And then uh, so I just was. That, I mean, that's what when pyromancer is actually pretty much at its best. I guess at its best it's when you're gushing going off, but when you're uh, when you're going ahead and just like countering their spells, getting free tokens, they don't last very long. And yeah. then I just got murdered game two by library, mostly because my brainstorm missed. I knew I was just doing nothing for two turns. Yeah, we talked about library. that. It felt like so. you had to go for it there. You couldn't afford to wait and get any deeper with him on the library. You just had to go for it, and then you miss. But now, yeah, talk I, me through would... game three. Because it felt like the first turn, you had a mental misstep in your draw, right? And you chose not to misstep Remora? Yeah, and that may have been a horrible mistake. But what I was thinking was, if he just plays Remora turn one, how my, my hand was very reactive. I didn't even have a Pyromancer at that point. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just going to sit there and say go for a few turns and I don't see how Remora is that great for him. He has to have a Remora plus a busted hand. Of course, then so he then goes, goes Mox Emerald Fast Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which was basically the worst for me. I was just like, oh man, I'm just going to lose now. But I, I feel, I felt like misstepping a Fast Bond there, letting him draw a card and then letting him cast his own misstep is just so bad for me. Okay. Uh, did, did he have a misstep in his opening hand? We did not have his hand. We could only see yours. Oh, right, right. Because if he had a misstep in his opening hand, it didn't matter. Our missteps would have traded at some point, no matter what. But sure. But it was still a pretty big judgment call, and I honestly don't know if it was right. Um, as it turned out, he had the cards he needed, except he didn't wasn't really doing anything. So since right. he had like the fast bond and he had mocks, but I was able to just sit there for a while. It's it's actually really good for me in this matchup that I can cast Pyromancer and he and it doesn't interact with Remora all that well, like for him. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, you declined to cast at the first turn, right? You, uh, I guess, cycled a spell bomb instead of casting a Pyromancer at first available opportunity? Yeah, the reason I did that was, uh, I, did, again, didn't think he was just going to sit there and pay for more for too much longer, and I would rather not play spells while he has Remora out. Then, I, then it turned out he didn't do anything, and I just felt like I wasn't getting any, and it wasn't getting any better for me. Okay. Yeah, so then the Remora, and then you decide to pick the fight with the Pyroblast on Remora. What was the trigger that led you to go ahead and pick that fight? Uh, mostly f for me, it was that, uh, he was able to, uh, he was going to sit there and just accumulate more cards and he was able to pay for the Remora over and over again. And, uh, I didn't want to actually have to like discard. Plus if he didn't do anything, he would have to discard, which is kind of relevant. Yeah, and he's also... fighting over the Remora. He was, he had to discard, right? He's drawing cards right. on the Remora, but from a full hand. I also thought that the game was going to end very quickly, uh, which I guess is a reason to not let him pay for Remora, but... It felt like next turn I was going to have to fight over something. I really didn't want to Remora in play when that was the case. Fair enough. Yeah, it. Uh, I don't know if that judgment call on the first turn was right or not, but it worked out. You have well, some yeah. data toward <laughs> it being okay at this point, yeah? Yeah, That. I mean, that's not certainly not bad, but uh, it, yes, that, that that is definitely not uh, particularly... <laughs> uh, could, that doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, that it was right. No, uh, of course. It's a little, little tiny bit of data, right? All right, looks like we're ready for round number three. This is going to be uh, Josh utter Layton, who's piloting a Storm deck against Chris Pakula, who is on Shops, the Terra Nova Shop deck in particular. Or on Stacks, if you're LSV. It's all Workshop decks or Stacks decks. Is that the world you live in? Yeah, <laughs> apparently. I, 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 it's hard for me to, to say anything else, honestly. All right, looks like we've got Chris's hand, but not the game yet. That hand is Workshop, Ancient Tomb, Wasteland. That's pretty solid. Uh, Chalice, who won the roll is going to be gigantic here. If Chris gets to Chalice on the play, it's so bad for the Storm deck. He actually have to decide whether to Chalice 1 or 0. Probably Chalice 1 is the most brutal thing for Josh's deck to have to deal with. Yeah, and especially, I mean, the reason this matchup is, I think, pretty good for Chris is that Josh has no Force of Wills, so right. if jo jo Josh is going to be handy, he just cannot win, like, on the draw. So I think we'll have Chris's hand, but not Josh's, which is which is fine. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, it's funny, because we're going to have Chris's hand, but his hand's going to be on the board pretty soon, no matter what, every game. <laughs> Fair. But, uh... Josh's deck is pretty fast. That, that's the one advantage he has. Yes. In, I mean, 
the reason to play this deck over a traditional Storm deck that has Force of Wills is that it's a little faster. It's a little leaner. It's got no dead cards, or less dead cards at least. So uh, it's still going to be pretty interesting to see exactly how this goes. Chris is on the play. Wow. He gets to play Revoker, and he's going to Chalice Zero, I guess? Well, I mean, if you've got nothing better to do, that, that seems pretty reasonable, though. I, I'm not sure about the, I guess, turn on Revoker. What do you name? You just pick a card at random, I guess? I mean, you know his list, at least. In Josh's right. list? What do I, you I guess I don't mean completely random. <laughs> I mean, you at least, yeah. I mean, against an unknown opponent, this plays a lot worse than against someone who's deck list, you know? This is a hand that I think Josh would have Chris start with every time, by the way. I mean, this hand has no Spheres, which is like one of the best cards. No Trinisphere, obviously. And Chalice for zero, while good, is not insane. This is what this this hand really has one lock piece plus uh, Wasteland. What did he name with the Revoker? I didn't see. Can we zoom on that? Voltaic key, okay. So he's just going to, to shut off the... <laughs> The, uh, the the time vault key win. No time vault combos for you, and the key's more useful than the vault, so may as well shut that, shut that piece down. And yeah, chalice is zero instead of chalicing one is an interesting decision here. I might have just chaliced for one there. Yeah, chalicing for zero on the play is pretty good, but if he chalices for one, he could have gone chalice for one and uh, then chalice for zero or sculpting steal it to, to make a chalice for zero, mm. which actually I, I think I would have been tempted to do, just lock out zeros and ones on turn one. Absolutely. And then turn two, you could revoke, though he's, Raptor's not going to play anything that he can revoke. It's still wow, because, because of the chalices. Turns out he's got a thorn on top of his library, so sculpting well, steel's got, got more different work to do. That makes this hand insane. So, I mean, this hand's yes. very close to being good, but and it, it drew the card it needed to be good, but I don't think, in general, it's, it's that strong of a hand I think it was good enough. Like, I definitely keep it if I'm Chris. You're saying it's below average? You, I think it is below average. I don't know if he, that means he should have mulligan it, but it's definitely on the weak side of the seven card hands. On the play, a cha basically you're just playing Chalice because you don't have nothing else on the play. That's not... Yeah, that's you have not, a Wasteland. You know, you're right, you do have a Wasteland. And against Josh's deck with <laughs> zero basics, that is something, but I don't think that's an incredibly strong hand. All right, well, here's the Sculpting Steel. Copying the Thorn, presumably? Yeah, I have a hard time imagining that it's anything else because that just locks Josh out of the game or at least comes very close to it. Pretty much. Josh is now down to, like, it's usually a Hercules recall is the only way a Storm deck like this can get out of some of these scenarios. Does Josh have a main deck Hercules? He, he actually doesn't look like he does. Oh, I don't see one. He has, He just concedes to stacks game one, it looks like, unless he just wins on turn one. So losing right. the die roll is pretty big. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Josh has a way out of this. Yeah. Given that Chris drew the thorn, I think it worked out better. But I, I don't know. I, I may have still wanted to, to just chalice zero and one on turn one. I think. It, yeah, I, I think I would have gone chalice zero. So follow, uh, chalice chalice one so that you can chalice follow one. up with chalice zero. I guess you can't no you you can't do both on turn one. My mistake. Yeah, you can only do one. <laughs> on Yeah. So Sculpting I guess still, actually, still cost no, no, no. Doing it no, yeah, Chris was right then. Chris was right for sure. I, I was thinking you could cast both, but I think you have to get Chalice Zero out on turn one. If you don't get it out on turn one, then like Josh just jumps all his artifact mana. Fair. Well, I guess you could maybe maybe uh Chalice one and then when Josh plays an artifact mana, revoke it, then then copy and, and make a Chalice Zero, but Chalice Zero on turn two doesn't really do anything. I just think Chalice One is better than Chalice Zero. That's where I'm at. Oh, I see. Um, that that's Josh the question for me. Which of the, if you only get to do one, I think Chalice. I mean, Chalice Zero was only good on the first turn, and he was first turn on the play. Okay, fine. I still think Chalice One is better. I, I don't know. I mean, it's close because Chalice One stops more spell spells. Right. But Chalice Zero stops four Mishra's Bobble, <laughs> and Josh has three Mox Opals plus all the regular Moxes. I forgot about the Mishra's Bobbles. Maybe, but maybe the Bobbles change it. I mean, Josh actually has a lot of zeros, more zeros than a normal deck, and I think less ones. Plus, you don't care about misstep or duress. So, yeah, maybe zero is better against Josh's specific list. Yeah, I feel like when I pilot a storm deck against workshops, I'm more, I live more in fear of Chalice One than I do Chalice Zero. But I haven't played I, Josh's I, specific list, especially since sometimes you're out like Chain of Vapor and you have like Preordains or whatever. But yeah. Josh just. Had, replaces all that with uh, Mishra's, uh, Mishra's Bobbles. And Chris is aware of this. I mean, you know, past week one, basically past the first week, 
every you know week one, four, and seven. Yeah, you you don't have you have deck lists. So you, like I was playing my match with Tom Martell's deck list up on the screen. I mean, of that is that is you know what, 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 what one of the advantages you have. It turned out it didn't really matter because you know he his deck doesn't have anything like that I had to play around that wasn't in a normal like uh, gush deck pretty much. But it's useful to know. So looking at Josh's sideboard here. Oh yeah, can we bring up the deck lists? I think we've got Josh's first. What do you think happens here after sideboarding? Well, I mean, he's certainly siding in like rebuild, ancient grudge, uh, a- ancient tomb actually, because that gets around spheres. Yep. Uh, nature's claims. Well, Josh is still pretty light on hate. I mean, when I was well, playing, well, he's got the he four had, ancient tombs. Like the four ancient tombs are there for this matchup. Certainly, but. The problem is the Ancient Tomb doesn't do anything unless you're using it to cast something that removes the spheres. You still can't beat a sphere. Yeah, like, so he's got the one rebuild is, I think, the going to be the key card here. Yeah, I mean, he's got Grudge. He's got Shattering Spree. He's got Void Snare. Void Snare's yep. cute. When I was playing this deck, Void Snare wasn't a card yet. Um, yeah, no, it's not. It's it's that you can wish for it, and it'll get rid of anything. You've been Leylined. You've been Meddling Mage. Doesn't matter what it is. Whatever permanent they've gotten snuck into play, go get the Void Snare and bounce it so you can go off. Right. I mean, this was exactly why I, or the exact card I was looking for when I was playing the Burning Wish deck, I just ended yep, up not yep, having yep. it. Yep. All right. Looks like they're ready. Yeah, I don't think Chris gets, has much in the sideboard here. His main deck is so good yeah. against Storm. I His main deck an anti, is anti-Storm. <laughs> Precisely. All right. Josh will be on the play here, which has to help. Looks like he's oh, mulligan yeah. once. Only a lot. <laughs> Chris's hand goes turn one Thorn. Which is fine. Or turn one Nora, depending on what Josh opens with. Fair. But Josh on the play, I mean, the situation's reversed. Josh has a number of hands that just that win the game on turn one. The stacks matchup in particular is one I don't think Josh is very well prepared for. Like, when playing a deck like this, having oaths was huge against stacks. Because sometimes you just oath them out and all their right. spears don't help them. Yeah, you're just turn one Ox, you know... Mox land oath. There, yeah, and, and then they could. I mean, sometimes they can make it so you can never cast another spell and you can still win. Or exactly, though Crypt does have Frexian Metamorph. Metamorph copying Gristleblend is pretty interesting. I was talking to him earlier. He said he doesn't fear giant monsters that much because he has so many ways to just copy them. Yeah, I mean that's relevant. I've lost games to those cards. All right. Mox Academy Brainstorm is not the most explosive start Josh could have, but being no, able I mean, to check out three more cards is handy. Yeah. I mean, it, the fact that it signals that Josh has no more zero-drop artifacts in his hand is pretty brutal right. for him because he knows he has to get on the board pretty strongly turn one. Otherwise, I mean, he's just not going to work. But given that he mulliganed, he, those three cards all, together are almost enough to keep. That was a good draw, but... Oh, again, the null rod. Prince is just going to look at null rod here. <laughs> Yeah, I know you were saying, depending on Josh's open, and I just, like, five minutes ago, I knew this could happen, and then somehow I forgot, and it was so painful to watch. Yeah, Josh wow, could... Chris can play a pair of thorns on his next turn. The, the good thing is, well, Josh has Academy, so even though Norod is turning off his two artifacts, Academy's still double blue, and Chris doesn't have a wasteland yet, so Josh has, like, a one-turn window to do something good here. Yes, It's gonna be red mana. Well, red red's a good sign. I mean, red red leads to killing yeah. of artifacts or burning or at least wish the for fortune. Yeah, that that's also oh, uh, one of those Yeah, actually, this is one of the ways Josh Quindo. Here's where that metamorph comes in handy. Tinkering <laughs> out a blight steel and then Chris copying it means that Josh needs to like. Well, he could burning wish for void snare. That would be insane. Wow, <laughs> that's probably what happens. Yeah, no, the Tinker is a pretty good, pretty good threat here for Josh. Tinker out the Blight Steel. Can you answer a Blight Steel right now? You're dead if you can't. Rebuild, unfortunately, does not work because it bounced both players. Uh, <laughs> it's possible that Josh. I mean, I guess that's the only thing is really just the Void Snare. Yeah, that's his. That's Granted, Josh is just losing to the Colossus because they do trade off, but Chris is still free to then play other lock pieces, and that ends up, you know, finishing things off. Can Chris do more than just play? Can he play the Thorn in addition? He can, uh, although that's... Yes. It turns off Burning Wish. It turns off Burning Wish for Void Snare. If he also if he plays the Thorn in addition to the Metamorph. Yeah. 
because it means that it, it means that Josh is able to not burning wish into void snare on the same turn with this right. current mana setup. And I think Chris is going to want to play the Thorn. I mean, there's no reason not to. He did. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the play. So sculpting steel copies Colossus. Thorn makes all of Josh's spells cost more. Said Josh is going to need to draw something, or he's just going to be able to find himself unable to cast spells. We. I, I have to admit, Vintage is such an awesome format, but we've had really lopsided matchups in the, these last couple of weeks. Like, some of these matches have just not been close. Some of them. I feel like we've had lopsided games. Yes, I suppose games is more... I mean, this... Sorry, coming in, this is a lopsided matchup to begin with, so these are normal games. <laughs> yeah, for this matchup they are, that's fair. Yeah, I don't think this is just strange. Just just in general, uh, I mean, Vintage has a lot of swings, so and we've been seeing some of them. So even though we can't see Josh's hand, the the black screen you see is is basically accurate as to <laughs> <laughs> what, what his hand is right now. Uh, if we could only get a black bar over his deck, and then we'd be you know we'd be set. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Josh has sequences of draws that get him out of this, but Chris is about to have another Blightsteel Colossus in play, plus and potentially another thorn. another thorn. Yeah, he's got enough mana for all of it. <laughs> Chris's deck just crushed this time. Jeez. Though I do think his matchup against Merfolk is not favorable. I think Dave Dave got pretty unlucky to lose to him. Chris, is, his deck looked really good. He played against two Storm decks, so his deck's going to look awesome. I mean, yeah, just, he, he, he just beat them both very easily. That is a good point. Do you think Chris runs this back again? Or does he need to it's change because now everybody's put him on this? Yeah, it's Colossus is going to attack. Josh is forced to block, and then next turn he'll die to the other Colossus probably. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get out of that. Yeah, it's interesting because as you are well aware... Chris playing stacks might make more people play stacks hate, you know, his opponent specifically. But mm -hmm. given that he knows that and they know that he knows that, maybe he's not going to play stacks. Maybe they'll take stacks hate out. Then he runs stacks, you know? <laughs> right, right. There's a lot of leveling in the Vintage League. Definitely. I'm, I'm just playing Dredge, like I said before. So. <laughs> just like you did the first three games, right? Yeah. Told us you were playing Dredge, and look, you showed up playing Dredge, obviously. Wow, yeah. that was a blowout. <laughs> yeah, this game was this game was something else. Wow, and so Raptor falls to 0-3. Seems like he's likely to change at this point. I don't know if you think, well, people will expect me to change, so I'll stick with it, but it didn't work. You don't necessarily want to stick with the deck that 0-3. Yeah, it's not necessarily that he 0-3'd, because, I mean, you can 0-3 with the best deck and 3-0 with the worst deck. Of course. But it, I, just looking at the games, I mean, did he has to look at the games he played and the matchups he faced and think, well, what do I think about that? I mean, he lost badly to stacks, but I think that's not a good matchup for him. But... You know, losing to another Storm deck when you have Duress's mental missteps, I mean, I guess that's a coin flip or pretty even. Losing, uh, and then I guess his other loss was to Merfolk, which, again, yeah. another Null Rod deck. I mean, maybe there's just too many Null Rod decks. Maybe if there's less Null Rod decks, his deck becomes good. Going to be tricky. Well, he does have a hole, though, at 03, and Chris, sitting on 3-0, and certainly has uh, enjoyed the first third of the season.